Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, it's a big honor to be part of Randall's uh, icon. You know, I've known Randall since the 1990s. We used to work in PCI Bank. We went through the same banking seminars and courses. Um, he gave me a topic tonight, and I'm glad to be with you, all of you, uh, which is cryptocurrency investing in year 2021. And, and for me, as a trader, investor, maybe even as an investment banker, um, this is a space that we can't neglect. And, and I think in the next five to 10 years, you're going to see a massive wealth transfer to people who get what crypto uh, really is, right? So that's my talk. I'll try to do it in 45 minutes. Now, um, my slides are also used by my group. Uh, we have a webinar series um, in Traders Apprentice. Um, we try to do it once a month. So basically, some of the slides you see here is um, I've also used them in the past. No, um, why why crypto? Now, most of you are have maybe negative notions or are clueless of why crypto is right. And maybe the best way for me to explain that is crypto is Web 3.0. All right. Um, in the past, and that's basically where the internet is heading. Uh, you had Web 2.0, as Kathy Wood of Art Invest would say, in Web. 2.0, the value accrued to the apps, right? So if you own Facebook, you become a billionaire. If you own Amazon, the money went to you. These are centralized apps. Um, Netflix, uh, it accrues to the owners of Netflix. The difference now is Web 3.0 is decentralized networks. You're not going to have fact checkers anymore. So it's a totally different direction where the internet is headed. You're going to have decentralized exchanges, decentralized browsers like, like Bat, Brave. You're going to have decentralized, maybe even decentralized social media, right? Um, in that world, the value will accrue to the token holder. You know, it's just like Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't have a CEO or a head of marketing. It doesn't have uh, shareholders the shareholders of bitcoin are those who own bitcoin so if you you want to bet on the ethereum protocol you buy ethereum if you want to bet that cardano would be the dominant protocol and a lot of apps will be built decentralized apps will be built on top of cardano then you bet on cardano uh your tokens um will serve as the fuel and the gas for the transactions and also for your voting or the governance. So in other words, you, you have more say if you have more Cardano tokens in the Cardano ecosystem. No? So that's that to me is uh, the very big distinction. A lot of people say, oh, cryptocurrency, they're just gambling and all this. That's not true. Crypto is the centralized network. And that's the thing that will fuel uh, this new internet. Okay, so what's my talk today? Uh, I'll try to do it in 45 minutes. Um, I'll just revisit with you first the principles of Traders Apprentice. Um, you know, we've been here since 2015. Uh, we focus on stocks, property, art, and now cryptocurrencies to create wealth. So the objective of Tappers is how do we create wealth, right? We're not just interested in making money. Anyone can make money, especially in a bull market, everybody makes money diba? but what's important to us is how do i make real um life sustaining wealth where hopefully in a few years we can retire so we discuss now the cycles of wealth building that uh in our art form uh we promote uh you can only do that during bull market so like you know like i said uh i had to leave the pse for a while because that's not where the bull market is the bull market is in cryptocurrencies or this global shift towards web 3.0 huh? and then lastly i'll talk about as traders how to milk the bull cycles uh, this talk actually was for stocks i've adopted it for crypto as well so these are tactics strategies of how to milk bull runs that I've done in the past 20 years of my career. And I'm sharing it with tappers because tap is uh, basically my advocacy. Uh, okay, tap principles. Uh, let me share you some stories, right? Um, 
this is from one tapper. Um, you know, when I started tap in 2015, 2014, I would get, you know, maybe 100, 200 uh, PMs at night in Facebook uh, for some reason. Uh, I don't know why it's night because maybe in Dubai or in the Middle East, it's, uh, it's still afternoon. And they send me their portfolio, you know, where uh, they have 10, 12, 20 stocks. Uh, some have 30 stocks. Um, mostly blue chips. And, you know, they asked me, Maestro, what do you think of my port? And I, I tell them, you know, the truth, which is, you know, half your port is red, half is green. So one plus negative one equals zero. Half a red, half a green, Merry Christmas. Uh, basically, people don't know how to bet. They don't know how to milk bull markets, right? Because if you have 20 stocks or 20 crypto and one of them is a 10x bagger or make, goes up 10x and you only have 10% of your money there, sayang, diba. So, um, you know, this guy was saying, Sir Tony, thank you for your guidance in TAP. I started stock investing in September. A friend recommended TAP. Uh, when I checked the value, of a mutual fund I had my money in July 2017. Its value is even lower. My total investment 2008 is 1.7 million. It just 1.35 million. So this is a stock trader of TAP. Today, why I decided to pull it out and invest in stocks, um, the money is now 6.2 million in less than six months i gained in idc and now this is another tapper here uh he's a seaman he is retired now he's also into crypto now and bought a lot of bitcoins uh two years ago i won't mention names but basically this tapper made nine million out of uh, an investment of around two million right uh this was stocks during 2017 when we had the bull market as you know PSE has not been on a bull market, and I've, I warned all my tappers uh, 2018 and 2019, get out of the PSE because we're going to go on a, on a deep wave four, right? Uh, even Jonathan Avelas, uh, he has the same charts. He called the uh, top in the PSE around 2017 um, and said that, you know, we're going into a wave four, and I basically have the same charts, right? So, so uh, for now, we have to focus where the bull market is. Um, talking about crypto, this is just one share from my member. Uh, a top leader got in Cardano at 11 cents. You know, Cardano is around $1.70. Um, his investment is around 104,000 US dollar already out of 14,000. So $90,000 was all gains, right? And this all happened in less than a year, right? So. If anyone tells me, you know, crypto is a dead end and all this, it's not true. I've known a lot of my members who became millionaires doing crypto. This is another uh, from my tapper. Um, basically, um, he is 20 million up. His port is 20 million already. All right. And this guy just started in crypto 2020 during the lockdowns. Another guy here sent me this PM. Uh, he's also buying BNB, ADA, Cardano, Link, and VeChain. Uh, basically, the value of his port today is 12 million, 12.8 uh, million pesos. Uh, this guy here, he makes basically 2.4 million out of a 90,000 investment on one crypto. Right, a crypto that we all liked and recommended when it was one centavo, and that crypto actually took off and went to 60 centavos. Uh, today, his Bitcoin alone is worth 11.9 million. So, if you go to TAP and join my group, these people are there, they're very active, they're blogging every day. Uh, this is sort of like a funny uh, story, Ray. Um, he put 20,000 in Digibyte last year, he was in the TAP playbook. You never sell, you, you ride from Baclaran. To Monumento, you don't trade. Trading is for idiots. You sit and hold during bull markets. And the reason for this is crypto bull markets are, are very strong. You don't need to trade. It's more important to stay in the bus from Baclaran to Monumento. Don't get down in Guadalupe. Don't ride in Makati and go down in Shaw Boulevard. That's what most people try to do. 
his 20,000 uh, went to 830,000 pesos. This another, I think this was the same guy basically. Uh, he put 90,000 in Pundix, which became 2.4 million. He also bought BNB and this other uh, crypto called XRP. Now, what I did is I also asked a poll because I was, you know, I was getting these thank you notes from my members. Okay, uh, how are you guys doing? Um, this was March 18. I made the poll. Um, in the past five months, what were your baggers? Uh, where did you make the most money? Uh, this guy said uh, nine to ten times their money. 156 votes. How many made 23 times their money? 100,000 becomes 2.3 million. 24 votes, right? 146 made six to eight times. And this all happened in six months. Six, eight months the most. Um, the newbies made four times their money. That's around 51 votes. Uh, some made just two times. Uh, two times is still, you know, in the PSE, two times is, is great, right? In crypto, two times or 300% is nothing. That's like, that's for newbies. Uh, I also asked them, which crypto did you make the most money? And the answer was VeChain, uh, which now I think is 13 cents. Uh, Cardano and MPXS, which was our Mentos, Piso Lang, uh, Bodega Sa Piso, and someday maybe goes to 30 cents at 30 centavos or 50 centavos. Um, and I asked them also in absolute amounts, how much did you make? 175. They made around 200,000 to 1 million in absolute amounts. Some 116 tappers made around just 50,000. Uh, some made around 1 to 3 million pesos in, in terms of total gains. Uh, that's around 40, 40 votes. And 6 made 10 million plus in less than a year. Now, how many of you can do that, right? And how many can, of you can do that in the Philippine Stock Exchange? Uh, hopefully, in the next bull run, in the next PSE bull run, that's possible. But for now, that's not entirely possible. Now, what are the characteristics of our top philosophy? Um, and that's the thing that's important because, you know, how do we fight in the PSE octagon? How do we survive? How do we milk this? How are we able to, you know, we do a money pakeo and hindi puro job, job lang, but you're also able to, to maximize the, the gains, right? The killings. Number one, we must embrace the chaos. We have to examine how we bet, and that is we have to focus our firepower. If you're the heirs of Henry C, sure, you can bet like Philip Hagedon is an old friend of mine, and you have a billion put in PLDT, put in Meralco, put some in Megaworld. No problem there. But if you don't have a billion, and you're an OFW in the Middle East, or you're my follower in Dubai, and you have 600,000 pesos, I cannot tell you to buy 20 stocks. It's, it's silly, diba? Uh, we focus on the big movers. So when we see something moving our way that can be a 10x or a 20x we have to bet more in the winner uh, we must pyramid the volume in other words you must increase the volume when it's loving us back diba? if if she's not loving you back uh you begin an iphone and then later you begin a coach and she's not loving you back so you always have to add to the one who loves you back that is a cardinal rule in traders apprentice and also you have to be multi-dimensional uh, you have to know stocks crypto property I'm, I'm i'm trying to launch a property module soon for tappers and the reason for that is because so many tappers are making so much money in crypto i'm concerned they will misplace it in other words very important you know where to put it so that's property because property is the ultimate wealth builder for us in top um what is making 5 million in stocks or making 10 million in crypto making 2 million in stocks if you buy the wrong property right if you buy the wrong property you just basically wasted it right? so uh property is very important it's close to my heart you know my mom trained me on property and that's why i know it with my eyes closed uh, by the way i've also put up two buildings in makati um in my career so i know property um from in the back of my head it's like uh, that's that's actually my my normal and my natural progression is always property uh ability to 
embrace chaos. There is no certainty. There's only adventure. If you're too sigurista, you're not going to make it. You have to appreciate the fact that you make decisions that it's not a perfect world. When we bought Cardano at six cents, none of us knew Cardano would fly, but we had the feeling it will. But there was no 100% certainty that Cardano will be like top four or top five altcoins uh, in the space, right? A speculator must embrace chaos. It's very important. We have to focus our firepower. So we have to examine how we bet. And in top, we start with five. We have to end up with one or two, the very best. You don't start with two and end up with five, right? So uh, we have our techniques, uh, which I myself developed all these years as a trader. And um, that's all available in top. Uh, since 1990, for example, uh, I never bought any blue chips. In top, we focus on the next blue chips. Because if you're buying the blue chip, you're buying the stocks that your uncles and your lolo made bodega when you were in college. Diba? You have to buy the next blue chip before it becomes... Uh, one of my best bets was Mega World in the 1990s. And now Mega World with 160 billion market cap is basically a, a blue chip in the property sector, right? Um, Crypto is very early also in the cycle, so you have to look at crypto. And the most important thing, the ones that will have a big formation and a big upside are not the blue chips. It's the next blue chips. What do these stocks have in common? My favorites, uh, two, three years ago, MIC, PXP. Now, their formation. They all look alike. I like the way they buelo. It's a major buelo. Uh, look at Cardano, which was... Uh, a major driver for most tappers in terms of their wealth, uh, the value of their wealth, uh, the past six months. It's the same chart of now and MRC. Now also has the same chart as Bitcoin. And Bitcoin and now have the same chart as gold. So they just these are hyper waves. And I, I have discussed that in TAP many times. But we don't know when it will take off. It's just sometimes the gestation is so long. Uh, Bitcoin took two years. Now it's taking almost the same amount of time. Cardano took two years to gestate. And then it took off. So how did I know it will take off? Um, I'll tell you when it's about to take off. But for now, I cannot say. right? So we just have to bodega slowly and try to buy it early before they take off. Um, if you look at the houses in Makati, from 80 pesos in 1962, 75 pesos in Urdaneta, 55 pesos in San Lorenzo, now houses in Forge Park are 1 billion, right? So uh, this is close to my heart because for me, property and Bitcoin are very similar. These are scarce, scarce stores of value. Now, I'll ask you a question. Um, most of you can just give your money to the UITF and they invest for you, Diba. Right? <coughs> but my question to you is, why is it that you have to speculate? Why do you have to try to find the big movers and the big winners? And the reason for that is this question. I'll ask you a question. Suppose I became very rich in the crypto world or somebody gave me a lot of money to distribute. And I ask all of you who, who are in this webinar, um, do you want me to give you a million dollars when you're 30? Or would you rather I give you a hundred million dollars when you're 75? You know, I keep asking this all my tappers and they always say, boss, give me a million dollars when I'm 30. I don't need a hundred million dollars at the age of 75. So, so on that alone, uh, we have no choice. You want to get rich while you're young. Uh, nobody wants a hundred million dollars when they're 75 years old. Uh, maybe the women will say $5 million when they're 47 because they like to hedge. But 80% will raise their hands and say, I want a $1 million when I'm 30. And that's really what the game is. Uh, it's how to make money, the killings. And I have 20-year-olds, 25-year-olds who are now millionaires. So, And that's what it's all about. It's earning your capital early. So you can buy that dream house, you can buy your car, you don't have to take the LRT, you have money for college or what have you, uh, or for your master's, 
uh, that's what this game is all about. But why is it that it's so hard to get rich? Uh, and in fact, uh, it's a lot of people fail, right? And just because you're a summa cum laude doesn't mean you're going to get rich. In fact, most of the people who are very adept in school don't turn out to be very successful financially. Why? Because, as if I can quote Miss World Megan Young, in any aspect of life, it's hard to get where you want to be without a mentor. So, so tapas a lot of mentors. Uh, some are more seasoned traders who mentor you because trading is like boxing. It's like mixed martial arts. You don't want to be mentored by a five dan black belter who can do kata and and punch the a wooden board and crack it, who has never fought in the octagon, who never fought in the PSC octagon or in the crypto organ, who never made money or survived, who never got punched in the face diba, by a mini crash. Um, that guy, the seventh dan or five dan black belter cannot help you because he never fought in the octagon. I'd rather be trained by a green belter who fought 20 times in the octagon and won maybe 18 times and lost two times, right? So the only one who can teach you is someone who experienced it. It's not someone who read it from some textbook. And that's what we try to do in TAP. I only want mentors who I have seen make money in front of me, right? Because if somebody there is blogging too often and some controversial stuff, and I have not seen that guy make any money on any calls or any market calls, whether it's stocks or crypto, I kick them out. I kick them out because they will just misdirect my members. Very important. Um, we all have to start with our cup empty. Emptiness is the starting point. In order to taste my cup of water, you must first empty the cup. The reason why it's so hard to teach people how to make money in trading is because they have so much stuff here. Uh, biases and preconceived notions in the past. Uh, oh, I only want to buy blue chips. Oh, I only want like VSO. And you know, you can't teach them because their cup is already full. You have to empty the cup. And once you empty the cup, it's useful, right? So these are the things we emphasize in TAP. Uh, drop all your preconceived notions and fixed ideas. Don't just say, oh, crypto is a scam. It's used for drugs and all this. I tell you, most scams and drugs are use cash, right? They don't use Bitcoin. That's not true. Most criminal transactions are using cash. Because that's the easiest way. How do you teach a, a goon how to use a, use blockchain? He's never going to get it, diba? Uh, so people who say Bitcoin is used by criminals, I laugh at that. Because criminals use cash, you know, dirty cash. Uh, weapon, they use cash. Okay, so in this sort of world, there's you, the trader. You have to have knowledge. You have to have experience that leads to further understanding. Without the experience, there's no understanding. There's just knowledge. So you don't understand what knowledge is more important and almost matimbang, right? And then you have to have money. And of course, the markets have to be conducive. It has to be a bull market. And you have to have the right strategies. And I give the strategies. I give, I give the game plan, how to bet, um, whether it's a bull market, when to be risk on or off. Uh, so I, I give that as the mentor until you... You succeed until you've tasted your winners, until you've made a 10 bagger or 20 bagger. And that is market instincts and gut feel. Unless you've been in the octagon and knocked, out, knocked down somebody, your confidence will never rise. And But if you go into the octagon or into the ring and you knock down someone, boy, you're changed. Your confidence is different. When you've tasted the five bagger or 10 bagger, or you bought a crypto that went 10 times, that is a very different um, experience. And it's life-changing. Um, I'll talk about the cycles of wealth building. Um, so in TAP, we believe you have to save. And so, you know, my good friend, Randall Chongson, he, he talks about this, you know, don't overuse your credit card. You have to save, you have to invest, Muna, your initial capital. And for me, I work on that and say, okay, now that you've invested and you, you valued savings, which is very important, and uh, you, you don't try to be a deficit uh, expenditure type of person, you have to make money in your first bull run. So you have to make the three to 10 times baggers in stocks or crypto. And once you've made that money, you have to buy property. 
That's exactly what I did in 1996. I, I bought property. That property has gone up maybe 20 times. And I mortgaged the property for the next bull run. That's basically what I did. In the Arab Times, 1998, I had to mortgage that property so I can buy stocks. And in 2009, 2010, I was able to buy Mega World at 50 cents. Uh, most of you, and this is the problem why a lot of people, you know, um, if you watch TV Patrol, diba, who's there, diba, you, you, you see this ex-basketball PBA player, he doesn't have money, uh, he's in the hospital and he needs money, or you watch TV Patrol and there's this starlet and uh, artista or sexy star, and now she's running a calendaria or what have you, and the problem there is when they were young, they assumed that because their salary and the cash flow, being an OFW or being an actor or being a PBA or whatever, was very good, they were rich. In fact, that's a misdirection, right? The, over time, what will determine your wealth is the assets that you buy and position in. So if you have a lot of salary, uh, a big salary and you're doing well, you might fall into the trap that ah, you don't have to sharpen your instincts because uh, your wealth instincts, stocks, property, art, crypto, you don't need to know that because you you have a good salary. Up, oh, I don't agree with that. You know why? Because over time, the money you make from your salary just pays for Meralco and PLDT and it loses value. If you don't buy the right assets, when you hit your 40s and your 60s, you'll still be left behind. Right, So you have to understand how wealth is created. That's why for me, property is very, very important. Uh, I, I, I know this family member in 2010, the mother-in-law wanted to sell the house in Vinyas. I, I, I told this story for 45 million, you know, 45,000 per square, 1,000 square meters. Well, I want to sell that house in Vinyas. And I was telling them, never sell that house. Don't sell that house. Um, they sold it and she moved to a condo. Uh, in 2011 but you know now that house that they sold for 45 million is worth 280 to 300 million 1000 square meters in green hills do your research right so they missed out just by if they just held nine years it would have been a lot bigger so assets knowing the right assets is very important in this game uh how do we transition uh as a top uh wealth builder right? Whether it's in stocks or crypto. I always give this example. If you had 400,000 and you do a three bagger, and as you know, a lot of my members did 10 baggers actually in crypto, but in stocks, three baggers is already significant. If you do a three bagger, your 400,000 becomes 1.2 million. In another trade, maybe in the same year or same month, it happened to be in Double Dragon and, and Mega World, you make another bagger, your 1.2 million becomes three, and another 3.5 bagger your 400,000 is one, two, three transactions, 10.5 million. I explain this because for me, whether this happens every five years or every five months in a bull market or every other month in crypto, this is the game. So you have to keep uh, getting bigger and bigger. And I have good news for you. The same skills to turn 300,000 into 1 million is the same skill to turn 3 million to 10 million, and the same skill to turn 30 million to 100. That I know. So it's the same uh, top skills in position trading and upsizing bets on winners, on the ones who love us back. Uh, this is a chart of the PSE. If you can see, there were almost seven bull runs up to 2017. Uh, these bull runs were huge. So if you were able to ride every bull run, you have you were able to buy a house. And basically, that's what happened to me. In 1996, I bought a house in Desmarinas Village from a Taipan, and I never sold that house. When the 1997 Asian crisis hit, and the index went from 3,400 to 1,000, and Ayala land went from 19 to 5 pesos, I was saved. Because I had this property in Makati um, that appreciated over the years. And I never sold it. I just uh, 
rented it out. What are the dynamics of a bull run? Um, basically, when there's a lot of printing, when they're printing money because there's COVID, they're printing money because they have deficits or whatever, they're printing money because the economy is not growing uh, or there was a subprime crisis. Every time they print money and interest rates go from five, three, four uh, per, uh, percent to one to zero percent, and in some countries in Europe now, they have negative interest rates. That's always a sign of an asset inflation cycle for stocks and property, and also uh, Bitcoin and uh, crypto. So that's the first sign. Um, T bills collapsing. You know, there was a time in the 1990s, T bills were 25%. You could be a moron and make a lot of money. You had 100 million, you'll make 25 million a year. Now you have 100 million, you'll make 1 million a year. This is the decade of the trader, of the top trader. And I always tell them that this is the decade that if you can have the smallest amount of capital, but if you know how to grow it, you're ahead than someone who has 100 million. But you know, in the 1990s, if you had 100 million, just buy T bills and leave it there. You make, you make 25% per year, that's gone. So in the past, you could be a moron without any instincts of how to survive in the octagon, whether it's crypto or stocks, and you make 25%. Ngayon, wala na yun. It's gone. Um, that, uh, that's no longer a possibility. You have to know what to buy. You now have to know where to focus your assets and your wealth. Uh, these are some of the drivers of a bull run. Uh, for me, this is what I pay attention to. Okay. Uh, the peso also is strong. Um, I think once we get out of this pandemic, uh, there's a chance the Philippine Stock Exchange can go to our wave five uh, takeoff because now we're on wave four ABC. Um, and after this, I think there's a lot of opportunities for stocks. And I always tell my followers, now that you make tons of money in crypto, I want you to put that in, in the stock market uh, in the next um, cycle. If you look at the PSE, um, basically where we are, we're at this wave four, which was around 9,000. We even went down to 6,000 or below, then 4,000 because of the pandemic, uh, 4,000 uh, levels. Uh, and, you know, the PSE was a 300 billion market cap in 2018. Today, it's still 300 billion market cap. It didn't go anywhere in terms of new money coming in. It's just stayed the same. Whereas Bitcoin was 150 billion, half the PSE in 2018. And today, Bitcoin is almost a trillion. Actually, it was a little over a trillion when it was around 60,000. I think this year, it will be way over a trillion. Uh, where the PSE has stayed flat, right? Um, so if you compare Bitcoin with the PSE, I would say Bitcoin is first 10 years, it's wave one. That's why I tell all my tappers, you have to buy Bitcoin because you're buying wave one. If you buy PSE stocks, matas na eh, you know? There was a time Megawatt was 4 pesos, went to 28 in 1995. Uh, ngayon, malaki na ang value ng Megawatt. It's very hard for Megawatt to to go up and rise uh, uh, already, uh, unlike Italpinas, which is a smaller market cap, di ba? Um, okay, so now we go into crypto. Now that you know how to milk, uh, and basically the perspective you need to be able to milk the markets, uh, Cathy Wood is the value will accrue to the token holder in Web 3.0. So that's why we're all positioned in Cardano, in Tesos, in Polkadot, uh, in Ethereum, is because that's where the wealth will be created. That is the next Facebook. That is the next Netflix. That is the next Google. So anyone who says crypto is just gambling, they don't understand where Web 3.0 is taking us. So just Google that and research that some more because this is where the game is. It's decentralized networks. It's no longer centralized apps like Facebook where somebody fact checks what you, you blog there. You have fact checkers and... You know, if I send you something in Facebook, Facebook can still check that if they, that's worth posting or, or not, diba? Um, It doesn't happen with Bitcoin. I can send you my Bitcoin, nobody can stop it, diba? But as long as it's a Bitcoin, right? If it's, uh, if it's already sold Bitcoin, it won't 
it won't go through so crypto is web 3.0 it's very exciting this is the time to get into it now having said that let me say this crypto is very volatile so uh in the past there's a four-year cycle in crypto and after december 2021 of this year i don't know we're moving again to the bear market which could be a year to two years before we move to another bull market past 2024 because there's another halving uh, the supply of bitcoin that can be mined is half uh, that always creates a next bull run that's why bitcoin keeps rising there will be less and less bitcoin over the years <clears throat> and every four years it's half right before you could mine 12 last year six and then 2024 you can get 3.25 or 3.5 bitcoins per block so there's less bitcoin if you're a miner you're not going to sell that for ten thousand dollars maybe you'll sell it now for one hundred thousand dollars then and bitcoin takes off um again okay so uh now how to milk the crypto bull run um here's the thing that I showed my followers uh, in 2017 january to december in 12 months 12 months uh bitcoin went from 1000 to 19000 dollars ethereum went from 7 to 700 uh there's uh, even doggy went did okay um so as you can see litecoin did four to three hundred dollars that's the crypto bull run that's how exponential and explosive it is and that's why for me like i tell my followers the psc for now cannot compete with crypto and that's because in crypto the growth is exponential because it's technology it's network uh, effects which i'll explain later on uh this is last year but i gave this guide to my tappers you have to have a portfolio and so you put 40 percent in bitcoin if you're uh, a risk taker 30 percent in ethereum if you're risk averse maybe 80 percent should be in bitcoin and the rest are the newer coins diba? Uh, because the newer coins have the highest potential but also they carry the highest risk because if those protocols or those um um in the case of Chainlink uh, or Cardano or VeChain, VeChain is supposed to solve the supply chain problem of the world. If not, it's not able to solve that problem, it can go to zero. Right? So, so each of these crypto is solving a world problem that needs decentralization on a different level. And like I said, uh, Bitcoin is wave one, 10 years. Uh, PSE took off time of quarry, 86 to 1997, then Asian crisis. That was the wave one of the PSE. Then after that, we have a we had a severe wave two. Then before we went to a wave three, which is uh, basically in the middle of that, that's where TAP was, was born. Uh, Tim Draper is very interesting because he's a tech billionaire. He invested in a lot of the, the Silicon Valley uh, tech startup that's, that became big. So he knows how to pick the winners. Uh, Tim Draper, in 2014, when Bitcoin was $100, he told everyone in 2017 bitcoin will go to ten thousand dollars and and everybody laughed at him so when i saw i i was starting out in bitcoin i, I googled tim draper i said why would a tech billionaire make a silly prediction a hundred dollar bitcoin will go to ten thousand dollars and why would he ruin his reputation why would he want to be the joke but you know what his prediction came true and when i was researching reddit i found this chart this is the same chart tim draper is using uh, and even now with his prediction that bitcoin can go to two hundred fifty thousand dollars by 2022 this is the same chart and if you look at this by 2022 it will go to two hundred fifty thousand dollars and it will go to a million past 2024 having this chart has this so oh, if you can see November 22, 2017. That's when Bitcoin will hit $10,000. So Tim Draper was using this chart in 2014 when he predicted Bitcoin will be $10,000 by 2017. So when I saw this, I said, oh my God, this is like, uh, because Bitcoin is based on math. It's based on, you know, the halvings and all this. And I said, oh my God, that's the adoption curve that uh, is right uh perfect and you know you, you, this is like my código and that's why when bitcoin went down to three thousand i said i have to buy this is my window to buy bitcoin bitcoin can only go higher 
uh, it will never go down. Okay, um, and why is that? Because Bitcoin is Metcalfe's law. So the same valuation driver of Facebook, Netflix, and why Google is a these are trillion companies, trillion dollar companies, and and Amazon is the same re valuation for Bitcoin. It's a network, uh, and more people in the in the network, the more valuable it is. <coughs> And so Facebook is all you valued using Metcalfe. But basically, the Metcalfe's law is very simple. The value of a network is N squared. If it's just me and one. And if you join me and I can send you something in that network, whether it's a, a photo of what I ate, it's N2. And there's a, a million in the network already, like a new network, that's uh, N to a million. And if there's a billion or two billion, like in Facebook, the value of that network is and to 2 billion that's the value of facebook diba? um so if anyone tells you that bitcoin um has no value they don't understand facebook they don't understand the theory of network effects they don't understand netflix they don't understand tech they don't understand google they don't understand the valuation for Amazon. So anyone who says, you know, Bitcoin has no valuation, it's silly. Uh, they're re revealing their ignorance. Diba? Now, what is Bitcoin? And I said this many times. It's Facebook Messenger. Diba? I can send you pictures of what I ate, uh, an invoice. I can send you a spreadsheet. But I can send you a dollar and I can send you a billion dollars in Messenger. But I can do that in the Bitcoin network. So Bitcoin is like Messenger, except I can send you pictures of what I ate. I can send you Bitcoin, only Bitcoin. That's the same valuation as Facebook, the same driver. Um, basically, we are four months into this bull run, and we have until maybe for me, December 2021, where it peaks. You have to sell some. Uh, I tell all my tappers. Baclaran to Monumento. Monumento is around November to December of 2021. That's the time when you have to sell uh, half uh, of what you own. If you bought Cardano at 10 cents and it's now a dollar, you sell minimum 10% to recover your capital. But to get more cash, you could sell 20-30% uh, of what you have. So this way, you also have cash to buy back during the next bear market. So this crypto bull run is not forever. And it's not supposed to be. That's what's exciting about it. Because a year and a half from now, I will be buying at the bottom. Now, one of my favorites is Plan B. Plan B is um, okay. Bitcoin's path to one million dollars. It's my in two or three cycles from to, from now, maybe twenty twenty five to twenty twenty seven. Um, you see, this is the chart of Bitcoin. After every halving, which is the red line, that's when the Bitcoin supply is half from what the miners can can mine. Bitcoin rallies. So same thing here in 2021. Our bull run is a function of this halving that we had in May 2020. So Bitcoin is like investing in something that's very cyclical, but you you can measure the cycles. Um, how exciting is Bitcoin, for example? Uh, one is, if you're into Bitcoin, the, the theory is that it will replace gold. Gold, which has no network effect. It's not on the internet. Uh, gold can be detected by metal detectors. So if you're in Argentina or you're escaping a government and you want to live with your money, uh, you can bring your gold in the airport because they're metal detectors, right? You need a private army if you have a lot of gold because anyone can shoot you and get your gold. It's not the same with Bitcoin. So so gold is kind of iffy, if you ask me, as a store of value. Uh, you can't even distribute gold to all the citizens of a country, right? Uh, if, if the central bank or a country has a lot of gold and the king wants to distribute the gold to all the citizens, there's no way you can distribute that gold. So what is gold? Gold is just there in the in the warehouse it's it's just an imagination it has no purpose you can't use it 
to buy coffee, right? Now, why is that important? Because um, the future is here. The, mill the millennials in the future are going to value Bitcoin more than gold because it's in their smartphone. Today, you can leave your Bitcoin in your smartphone. There are wallets now that can hold your Bitcoin, your Cardano, and all your other crypto. There are good wallets now. And you can use it to buy coffee uh, and to what have you, right? Uh, so as we age, the baby boomers, and in 15 years, the world goes to the hands of the millennials, they're taking over, right? So I always tell my friends, you know, the millennials, they're different. You know, our Lola and Lolo gave us a more solo, uh, and a more solo painting. We will hang it. Your kids, your grandkids, don't expect them to hang the more solo painting. They'd rather have a PS4, PS5, maybe by the time PS10. The Amor Solo won't fit in that room with the PS10. Um, you give them land, they ma invade lang yan squatter. Why? Because they're not going to bother to go to some raw land like our Lolos uh, bought raw land for us. Walang Wi Fi doon. You know, mahina internet doon. Uh, they're not going to bother with that. You know, they're not going to buy big mansions. To them, a big mansion means nothing if there's poor internet right so they'd rather live in a in a compact small place less cleaning and less less household chores so they can focus on what they like to do which is the online and all this so it's a different world and bitcoin is part of that world gold is said it's not going to be part of that that world so expect bitcoin to surpass the value of gold so if bitcoin does that bitcoin gets to 12 trillion that's four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars per Bitcoin, because there's only twenty-one million Bitcoins. Uh, crypto is exciting, and I, I just um, I just blogged this the other day. Um, we can all have many bets, and we can bet on Bitcoin. We can bet on protocols like Tezos or Cardano or Polkadot, and we can also have bets on the top ten or top fifteen. But the best traders i know just don't focus on betting and making money uh they get life-changing volume so i know i know people i know tappers and i won't mention names there's one guy who bought a million cardano when it was six cents maybe at the time to strike three four million pesos you know cardano goes to 30 dollars he has 30 million dollars it's like he's money pacquiao you know that's how much money money pacquiao won uh, every fight 20 million dollars and he's like below 30 years old a 30-year-old, below 30-year-old Filipino has a million Cardano. When it was six cents, it was so-so. But now at a dollar, it's worth a million dollars. It goes to $20, Cardano, this cycle, is worth $20 million. That's how powerful uh, crypto is. Uh, on this Bitcoin, we had a wave C correction. And I shared this in TAP. We're now moving to the wave three of this uh, move. And so I expect that 60,000 high, 61,000, whatever, to be taken out. And I see 100,000 in Bitcoin this year. All right. So I'm buying back even more Bitcoin. But I'm also focused on the protocol bets and some of the uh, low-cap bets that I, we like in TAP, right? So uh, there are some low-cap bets that can expand 50 times, 20 times. It's possible within this cycle because, like I said, like I said it's only happened in past cycles. Uh, one one of the things that we're buying is we're buying Kate coin, right? People laugh at this, but it's true. Uh, Kate coin is a funny coin. Uh, every transaction you get one percent, and if you're holding every day, your your coins are increasing. Now, why did I mention Kate coin? Because here's what happens. No, I don't like dog coin, right? Because to me it's a shit coin, right? And there's no utility, but Kate coin has a utility. But my point is this: as traders, we have no preconceived notion. So in other words, when you get the next bull run, people will look for the next Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is already $100,000. And there's a lot of opportunity on the next Bitcoin. But also, there will be a lot of opportunity on the next Dodge coin. That's why this game, it's very interesting, but it's also very risky. You really have to know what you're doing, right? There's not such thing as you know, a bad coin or a, a bad stock. Uh, all good stocks have bad moments and all bad stocks have good moments.
That's basically what, how I look at things. Um, there is also another school that says, uh, and Mike Maloli is one of them, or Kiyosaki, is that we're going to go into a global collapse. Uh, I'm not sure if that's true. I'm not 100% sure, although I know in the Philippines, our economy has really suffered, but I think we will bounce back. Uh, but especially on the developed countries where have a lot of debt, they have a lot of debt and it's the debt has already gone over the heads. Um, I, 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 I'm really scared for them and Bitcoin may be important in those countries. Maybe it's Lebanon, maybe it's Cyprus, I don't know. Kung wala kang Bitcoin, magdasal ka lang, right? But in the Philippines, our BSP is, is very conservative. Our banks are run by families like the C's and the Ayala's, the, it's not run by professional managers like the ones who run Deutsche Bank and run it to the ground, you know, because professional managers, if they're compensated short term, they will do derivatives, they will do all these short term transactions, they get their bonus at the end of the year, but whatever happens to the bank 10 years after they leave, it's of no consequence to them. But here in, in the Philippines, our banks are owned by families, diba? So, uh, the C family owns BDO, Metro Bank by the T, and uh, so I feel very safe. So, Philippines is in a beautiful spot. You almost don't need Bitcoin because uh, I don't think our banking system really collapsed. First, 80% are unbanked, right? In, in the other countries, everybody has a student loan, a car loan, a credit card loan, a mortgage. And then they don't have a job. So, you know, they have to depend on their federal government to throw them heli helicopter money, you know, and so they can go shopping, they buy food and pay for some of their debt. Uh, we don't have that problem. Uh, sa Pilipinas, baliktad. Ang problem natin, pagkain, simple things. Right? You know, anong kakainin ko, ganun. It's sad, but at least it, we're not over here, over our heads with, with debt. And that's not the same with the other countries. That's why, if you notice now lately, Ray Dalio said, Ray Dalio of Bridgewater said, you know, I have some Bitcoin. And another guy, Icon, Carl Icon said, you know, I like Bitcoin. So now the rich people realize this. They're going to hit, get hit with inflation. Uh, even Elon Musk bought Bitcoin. Um, they're in deep trouble. If inflation takes off and the Fed has no ability to to fix that because um, there's just too much debt and any rise in interest rates, managed or otherwise, will actually create more problems uh, for them. Uh, here's my, I know money is made by sitting, not trading. So we huddle, we buy the, the Bitcoin um, while well, it's low and we don't really trade, we, ho we huddle the Bitcoin. It takes time to make money. It was never the thinking that made the big money. It was always the sitting. So it's your buying and huddling and, and uh, this thinking that you'll make money jumping in and out, you know, um, jumping out of the bus in Guadalupe trying to get back in Show Boulevard. And this, these are people who never made money. So for me, I call them ADHD traders. You know, they, they try too hard and they're still poor. The ones who made money with me, they bought Cardano at six cents, at twenty cents, thirty cents, fifty cents, eighty cents, a dollar. They haven't sold, and it went to two dollars, and it collapsed back to a dollar, and now it's rising now to one seventy, again seventy percent up from the collapse. And they have not sold; they just sit in the bus, Baclaran to Monumento. Buy right, sit tight. Okay, so how do we make money? Uh, in the top way. Um, and I'll explain this more if you join my group. Um, we choose five. Livermore said he should accumulate his line on the way up. Let him buy one-fifth of his full line. If that doesn't show him a profit, he must not increase. So you buy five, and your 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 game plan is you divide by five, one-fifth. And the one who moves well or moves in a certain way, that's a bagger. My advantage, 20 years in the game, I can spot baggers. You know, Remember, 1990s, I never bought any blue chip. So I just look at the stock. I just look at the crypto. I know exactly how it's based on how it moved. I know what's going to happen next week. Uh, why do I know that? Because I do speculatives. Uh, I don't buy blue chips. I never bought the, the blue chips. I bought only the second liners when I was in the PSE. And the same for crypto. So after, say, four months, this is up. This is up. You can transfer half of your money here to here, if not 100% of your money on the one that's already uptrending or making new highs or doing breakouts. So you have to focus the firepower, right? It's not what you buy. It's how you buy. It's how you bet. You have to play poker. You have a winner, you bet more. It's not blackjack. The reason why a lot of people don't make money, they try to play blackjack with the crypto or the stock market. It's dumb. 
right? This game is poker. You never met someone who played blackjack and got rich, but you know a lot of guys who got rich playing poker uh, who got rich because it's not 20 games that he has to win. He can only win three games, but in two, three games, he raises the pot. He goes all in when the odds favor him. So if this is your winner and can go like this, 23 bagger, over time, all of your money here has to be here on the winner, the one who goes farthest. That's how I trade. It's very simple. The market decides where I put more money. It's not my genius and over-analysis paralysis. Okay, so later on, uh, just remember the rules. You cut losers and you roll the profits and you add to the winners. The one who loves you back, you add money uh, to them. It's Trading is that simple. That's why for me, I say, you know, um, the people who don't make money in trading, they try too hard. They try to overthink, but that's not, that's not where the money is. Some of the most useful and profound trading maxims are asininely simple, which is why people who are overly analytical and warning to all my friends because I'm an MBA, CPA, CFA, they never made money in the market. Okay, I'm very active in my alumni uh, and a lot of people I know are MBAs because I'm also an MBA. I went to Wharton. Uh, they can hardly make money in the market because they are too analytical. They forgot that the market has its own logic and the game is to how to flow with the market. So people who are overly analytical, you have to warn you, CFA, CPAs, they don't make money in the market. I know that for a fact. I know the people who made money, those 23X, 60X baggers, they were my newbies. None of them were MBAs. As in ninety simple, extremely f stupid or foolish. Um, this is also uh, another way, which is the poker part, which is you pyramid the winners. You keep adding to the ones at it as it uptrends. If it hits a stop loss, you have to sell some. But basically, this is the formation. Uh, you want to go long and add on the uptrend. Pick up more on the downtrend, so you have to have. But if your stop loss are hits, maybe you have to scale down your bet. So that's how I do. So these are trading stops. Uh, people ask me, Maestro, what's your target price for this? I always tell them, no target price. Target price is a function of your genius logic that will keep you poor. I don't have a target price for Bitcoin. I don't know. Bitcoin may be 200,000, 300,000. I don't care. I will just have a trading stop. <clears throat> if Bitcoin hits my, my trading stops at 180,000, I have to sell them some there. If it, that trading stop is hit at $500,000, that's where I'll sell. But if it's not hit, why will I sell? So I just move it higher. In the bull market, the game is to buy and hold until you believe the bull market is near its end. So, you know, Randall, a friend of mine, has Cardano. He has a lot of good cryptos. Also, just hold until the bull market is near its end, which is, I think, December. But I'll see the indicator. I'll see the needles and I'll see the... RSI, I'll see a lot of other metrics. So I will warn, my job is to warn my tappers. Oops, I think it's time to bail out 50%, 40%, depending on where you entered. Money is made by sitting, not trading. The big money is not in the buying and the selling. Charlie Munger, the assistant of, uh, actually a partner of uh, 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 Warren Buffett, but in the waiting. Don't be in a hurry to take profits. And the ang sakit ng karamihan is they... They, elite, they make 25%, they're so happy. You know, 25% is nothing. 50% is nothing. 100% is nothing. I don't even sell at 100%. 100% I'm buying, depending on the bull run, depending on the asset class. Uh, some, some people sell on, uh, okay, the problem there is they're not able to get volume on the duration of the bull run. If the bull run is still uh, ongoing, there's no real reason to exit. As long as the stock is acting right and the market is acting right, do not be in a hurry to take profits. So thank you. That's uh, basically my talk. Um, it's a great honor to be part of this icon. You can follow me in Twitter. Uh, in my Traders Apprentice group, we have webinars now because not, nobody can can do live. Uh, we used to do it in Metro Club. Uh, uh, now we have to do it via webinar. So it's free. Tap is my advocacy. Um, and I used to write for Rappler, but uh, lately it's hard to find time. So with that, thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to explain crypto in, in simple ways. Thank you all.